Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to part four of this webinar series, um, this crash course, if you like. And uh, let me just have a look, see who's in here. The numbers are building up. So I'm going to give it another couple of minutes before we get started. And I am so excited about this session. I'm so excited about um, some of the prompts I'm going to be sharing with you and really also excited about how much time you're going to be able to save yourselves with these incredible chat GPT prompts um, that will allow you just to click the button and sit back and relax while the AI does all of that heavy SEO lifting for you. So I just want to take a quick look at who we've got. Okay, some familiar names, some familiar faces, some new ones. We've got people from all over I, I i guess they're from from all over just look, looking at some of the names um if you are from outside the uk just drop something ah john my old buddy john there you are good to see you again mate i should give you a certificate for the end of this one your fourth your fourth one in a row okay numbers are ramping up just had another 10 join um if you're from outside the UK, let us know where you're from. I would love to hear that. We put the webinar on at this time just so we can get people from uh, the US as well as APAC as well. Uh, good to see you, Andrew. Um, okay, I'm gonna give it another 30 seconds before we get going. More and more flooding in. That's so good to see. Ah from London, Canada, Nolan. Thank you for joining us all the way from Canada. Amazing. Okay. Anyone else from outside the UK? I would love to know where you're, where you are dialing in from. Dialing in, gosh, such an old codger. Oh, more from Canada. Uh, Kat, you're from um, Aurelia in Canada. We've got Steve from Wisconsin. Uh, Mark from Philadelphia, um, Rebecca from Wisconsin, Chelsea's from Oklahoma. Gosh, amazing. I'm so glad you guys are here with us. Okay, um, I, think, I think that's enough preamble. Let's, let's get started. I am sharing the deck. Um, let me tell you how this one's going to go. Um, I've got a bunch of tabs preloaded there. Um, because sometimes these prompts can take 30 to 40 seconds to generate, bearing in mind they're saving hours of time. So I'm gonna try and do as much live as possible and I will be jumping into those tabs where necessary. So in terms of the running order for today, this is um, number four, I've already mentioned that, AI and ChatGPT. We're specifically going to be looking at the use of ChatGPT to save you time, to do those tasks that cause you to roll your eyeballs. We all know what those tasks are. Um, ah, John from uh, north of Copenhagen. Hello, John, hello. Right, um, so using ChatGPT to save valuable hours of your time. So I've kind of divided this into three parts. And before anyone asks, who's that little fella there? That is my alter ego, or one of them anyway. I actually built this dude using um, a prompt that I built in ChatGPT, um, and that was then passed into Midjourney to basically give you an idea of what the SEO of the future is going to look like. Um, and there it is, that's our junior SEO, who's gonna be doing a lot of the work for us today. I'm gonna to show you how you get set up in ChatGPT4. I'm gonna show you the three Ps. What does it take to use this software really well? Well, it takes mastery of prompts, mastery of prompts. I've spent hours and hours and hours building and refining prompts. It takes practice. And of course, uh, there is one other P that's plugins. And I'm gonna show you some of the best plugins. I have reviewed every single plugin that there is for ChatGPT4, and I'm gonna show you which ones to use and when. So what are we gonna look at today? What kind of heavy lifting can this software do for us? Well, there is a ton of things out there. Now, I'm not gonna be talking about creating content, but believe you me, if you wanna create 
incredible content, up-to-date content, forget the hallucinations, based on websites that you get ChatGPT to analyze and improve upon, you can do that. But I'm not gonna show you that today. I'm gonna show you how to do some of these things. And for each one of these, I'm building out a prompt. And we've got 17 prompts to share with you today. Um, oh, Isaac from Kenya. Welcome, 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 Isaac. So these are just some of the tasks. Let me give you some clues on what we're gonna look at. Um, keyword research. Never, never be fearful of keyword research again, because I tell you what, ChatGPT can do it all for you. Taking those terms, classifying them by intent, or any sort of classification that, that, that you want. Clustering, how to cluster massive groups of terms. You want a content plan? We all want a content plan. Well, ChatGPT will do that for you. Building topical maps. I'll show you how to do that, to build a topical map of 150 articles in less than two minutes. And then we come into the on-page analysis. Can you analyze the performance of a web page in real time? Yes, you can. You couldn't before, but you can now, thanks to incredible plugins and the ability for ChatGPT to browse the current web. Okay, can you take a web page and analyze it from an EAT perspective while paying close attention to Google's latest guidelines in real time? Yes, you can. I'll show you how you do that. Will ChatGPT build scoring systems for you to make your life so easy? Absolutely. Core Web Vitals, we all know that plays out above the fold on page one. If you want to know your competitors' Core Web Vital scores without going and plugging all that detail in, or you just want to know how you need to improve to get above them, ChatGPT does it all. Transcribing videos. You know, you see those videos that are 90 minutes long and they promise to give you the 10 things that you need to do for your content plan or whatever it is. You don't need to bother watching that anymore. ChatGPT will analyze that 90 minute video in less than 60 seconds and tell you exactly what you need to do based upon that. All of that and more, including algorithmic checklists. So let's, let's get straight into it. And I'm gonna start with the prompts in just a moment. But before we get into the prompts, I mentioned plugins. Plugins, and I'll show you how you set those up, are a super powerful way of getting ChatGPT to do more for you. These are the plugins that I use. The ones I'm gonna use today, I've highlighted in green. So you may go to ChatGPT, you may be using version four, it doesn't matter which version you're using, but if you ask ChatGPT, to analyze a website for you, and it comes back and says, hey, I'm just an AI, I can't do that. You're missing the plugin, okay. Uh, my, one of my favorite plugins is WebPilot, that one there on the bottom row, and WebPilot is, is amazing, is amazing. And what that will do, will analyze web pages in real time. There are more and more SEO plugins coming out. ChatGPT is not brilliant at numerical analysis. My, my son tells me this when he tries to get it to do uh, his quantum mechanical equations. But uh, Wolfram, Wolfram Alpha, we all know and love Wolfram Alpha. has been around forever. You want to build charts? Use that plugin. You want to analyze Core Web Vitals? Use the Website Performance plugin. You want to digest a video in 60 seconds and know what you need to do? Then there's VoxScript, which also analyzes web page as well keyword research yeah there's keymate scraper you want to scrape the links off a page and find out how many links that page has got internally and externally scraper there's a tool to do that okay so tons of incredible plugins so plugins and prompts and practice that's all that we need so in terms of prompts, as I have learned the hard way over the past few weeks of building out prompts and being dissatisfied with the results, I finally come up with a formula for success. And I'm gonna be putting all of this next slide into practice in the prompts that I'm gonna show you today. And there's my, there's my other 
alter ego again built using chat gpt into mid journey out comes this little fella and he's going to do all the work for me so when it comes to prompts when it comes to asking chat gpt to do something to analyze a web page um, to be somebody um, you've got to be as specific as possible if you're not specific you'll get woolly fluffy answers back you need to state your intention what is this for are you going to a board meeting exactly what do you need this information for what is your intention we talk about a lot of it about intention in seo and about the cert being a manifestation of intention the same applies to chat gpt direct the output if you want a table you tell chat gpt you want a markdown table with three columns you say what you want the headers of those columns to be and what sort of detail you want in those individual cells and never be satisfied with the first answer if you don't think it's the perfect answer then ask follow-up questions as well and you can even put the response back into chat gpt and ask it to check the facts for you and experiment with different phrasing and this is something i do all of the time and i've already mentioned fact checking so at the bottom there it's kind of a formula that i try and use and I'm going to show you some really simple prompts and some much more elaborate prompts, okay, throughout the next sort of 30 minutes. Now, at the bottom there, there's a formula. Specify the context. Use specific information. What exactly do you want? What is your intent? And how do you want the response? And that is the secret to getting it right. So let's get into not the prompts, let's get into the setup. And for the setup, I'm just gonna to jump to a new tab and I'm gonna load up ChatGPT. And here I am using the version that costs 20 quid a month. It's about 20 bucks if you're from the US, not sure what it is in Kenya. Um, but I've got the option here of using 3.5 or four. Now you don't need to use the paid version at all, but the paid version gives you a lot more flexibility with plugins and web browsing. So what you're gonna to want to do is jump into ChatGPT4 and you can see when you first log in, there are a whole bunch of prompt templates here. So if you wanna write an outline for a blog, we're not gonna do that today, you click the button, you fill in those highlighted spaces, and then you send that message and that goes directly to ChatGPT. And some of those are really good. But if you want things more about SEO, then I would click the middle button and go to the top prompts. And when you go into top prompts, you then have the ability to search. So we can search, for example, SEO. And then we've got a whole bunch of different prompts and you can see the votes that they've got. Um, get a monthly content calendar in one click. Yeah, why not? Let's have some of that. Click on that and there's the prompt. Okay. So those are some of the pre-built prompts um, and prompts from the user community. Couple more things that you need to do when you first use this. Down at the bottom in the left, you click where your name is and you click on settings, um, uh, beta features, browse with Bing, yes. You wanna activate that because then you can get more up-to-date information. Otherwise, you're gonna be relying upon older information and make sure you've got plugins checked as well. Thing about plugins, you can only use three at a time. So you need to be careful each time you're building a prompt thing, which plugin is going to be the most suitable? And we'll do that today as well. So make sure plugins is enabled there. And then we go straight in. So prompt number one, super easy. And I am in these prompts, not gonna be doing a thousand keywords, for expediency, I'm just gonna say 10 or 20 keywords, for example. So um, our first prompt looks like this. I want you to act as an SEO expert. And here's a really good tip. The phrase act is a trigger for ChatGPT. What do you want it to act as? Act as a copywriter, act as a fashion expert, act as a chef, indeed. I want you to act as an SEO expert and provide me with 10 keyword alternatives 
for the search phrase best men's blazers. Don't mention brand names. I put that in there because sometimes ChatGPT gets carried away. So let's start that in our new window. Um, I'm going to have the plugins version running and I've got three plugins active there. If you want to switch your plugins, you click there and you can scroll up and down. You can even view the plugins store. There's about 150 of them and I have reviewed every single one of them related to SEO and they, they were the ones that I showed you up at the start. So that first prompt, I'm going to paste it in there. I want you to act as an SEO expert. Let's just run that one. That'll be super quick. And let's see what ChatGPT comes back with. OK. And it's actually using the SEO app. So I'm going to give that um, a few more moments to run. And if it's taking its time, then we'll jump straight into the preloaded tab. And then what I would love it if you uh, gave me your vote on how good you think this particular plugin or particular session is. I probably shouldn't have used this plugin. It doesn't really need a plugin for this. It's just being due diligence. Okay, so while that's running, give it another five seconds. If not, I'm going to open this tab because here's one I created earlier. So we are looking for 20 keyword alternatives. In this case, I did 20. And here we have them. Top rated men's blazers, men's blazers, high quality, best men's jackets. And I think these are pretty good. I think those are pretty good. How's that one going? OK. And there's our top 10 high end men's sports coats. That sounds very American, doesn't it? I don't think we wear sports coats or sports jackets here. You can, if you want, specify your audience. So I could have said um, for a UK searcher superior men's blazers men's stylish blazers okay super simple i could equally have put in a thousand keywords there so that's where we start keyword ideas you can plug in uh, keywords anywhere that legendary seo plugin that you can get for chrome i've actually got it built into chat gpt as well so you can combine those two okay now back to our prompts so that's a super simple one to start with the exciting ones the algorithmic alignment ones are towards the end so you're going to have to stick around for those but here's number two okay act as a keyword research expert okay i want you to generate a list of 20 keywords closely related to men's blazers without duplicating any words create a markdown table you don't have to say markdown but create a table that'll do with two columns, keyword and search intent. First column is a keyword, the second is intent. And I've given it, you can define any category of intent. These just happen to be the classic ones first defined by Andre Broder about 20 years ago. Now, here's another tip. Do not repeat yourself. Do not self-reference. Do not explain what you're doing. And that's what ChatGPT does sometimes. It loves to explain what it's doing. So let's start this with a new one, ChatGPT. I'm just going to use four. I'm not going to use plugins. Let's paste that in there and see what we get. So this should very rapidly build as a table. I say rapidly, but it's it's kind of like it's like Friday afternoon. Anybody that's not outside in the sun is probably Googling um, some stuff from Amazon. So there's me telling everyone how fast, how fast this is. So uh, everyone's online. Okay, well, we've got more people in as well. Let me just have while that's running, let me just who else, see who else we've got. Oh, network error. Good grief. Hopefully, that's not my network error. Let me just check. Have I got? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. So let's go straight into the answer. Now, here's one Blue Peter style I generated earlier. And it's done exactly what we've wanted. We've got 20 alternatives here to men's blazers. And we've got ChatGPT to define the category of intent, transactional, commercial, local, informational, etc. Now, if you wanted, we could build this out and we could say, as well as that, can you categorize these by subtopic? Um, can you put them into entity groups? And it would do that as well. So when it comes to building out keywords, sorting out keywords, and doing all of that painful work, 
you can do that in here so easily. 1,000 keywords, 2,000 keywords. Sometimes it's nice to break it down for ChatGPT though. So that's our second example. So let's go into number three. Now this one is similar. And the prompt I'm using is act as a men's fashion writer. You are writing, so I'm being specific, you are writing a long form article about the best men's blazers this summer. List five questions I should try and answer in my content. And you know what? These are incredibly similar to people also ask. So why don't we why don't we try running there? I'm gonna close that one. Let's I can do that one straight down here. And the prompt, let me come back to the prompt. Create a, a markdown table with two columns, question and website. The first column should be the question that you generated. The second column should be the top ranked website. So that's actually going to want to go to a website. So what I need to do, and I will show you here in number three, I've actually used two plugins here. I've used this one, which browses the web, and I've used VoxScript, which browses the web, and also YouTube. And here's what it came up with. Five questions and the top ranked website. So when you mouse over this, I can see that's GQ.com. For the question, what are the best men's blazers for summer 2023? Now this could be a list of 40 questions. It could be 50 questions. But when I compared these questions with Google's People Also Ask, there was a remarkable overlap there. So, you know, as a substitute for that or as something on top of that, I think this is a really great way of getting inside the mind of the audience from an AI perspective. And then not only have you got the question, but you've got the top ranked website, the top ranked website in Google right now. Um, who else have we got? We got men's health. And then as we scroll down, we've got uh, more men's health. And then we got another GQ.com. So it's like a men's health sandwich with GQ sliced bread on either side. Okay, so that's just another example, um, a really neat prompt. So let's come back to our prompts. And number four, I love this one. Long tail content ideas, prompt extension. So I'm gonna copy this, and this is a prompt that comes in two parts. I run a website about skateboarding and longboarding. I don't. It would be quite, a, quite nice to do that. What are some of the sub niches I should be tackling with my content? Give me the results as a table with a sub niche, with, with a sub niche and a number between one to 100 to indicate the popularity of that sub niche. How cool is that? So let's, let's have a go at that one. Let's have a go. Let's, come on, ChatGPT. Do your stuff. So for this one, I am going to go to model four and I'm going to need the plugins and I'm going to paste that prompt in here. One of these is going to work for me. OK, sure, I can help with that. I don't have real time. Oh, I've obviously got the wrong plug in there. So let me go back to number four. And this was what I did this morning. Sure, I can provide some suggestions. Please note that the popularity score is a subjective estimate based on general trends that may not reflect the exact popularity. So that's really nice of ChatGPT to tell me exactly what it's doing. And then we've got some of those sub niches there. Now I have done this with a list of 100 and it does it beautifully. And again, I would probably say, do not repeat yourself and do not explain what you are doing. And then the second question I loaded in here, taking the sub niche, longboard tricks and techniques and brainstorm a list of articles based on popular search terms and long tail variations that are likely to be easy to rank on Google. Present the results in a three column table with the proposed article title, the target keyword and then the popularity. And that's done it there. And I think 
I think that's amazing. I think that's absolutely wonderful. So we've got the HTML titles that we can just cut and paste. We've got the target keyword, and then we've got the level of popularity as well. So that, for me, is such a great time saver. And I have lost count of the number of times I've sat with clients and we are brainstorming and thinking around topics and ideas and niches and sub-niches. And all the while, ChatGPT can go directly to today's web and pull all of that information back for us. Absolutely incredible. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. We're gonna branch away from keywords shortly, but this is one that I love, and I was showing this to a, a colleague this morning, and she got very excited about this one, as indeed I, I, I did. So, you know those situations when you're with a client, or you are the client, and you're looking at another website and thinking, why are they doing better than us for best beaches in Italy? We've done everything that we can. We've written a beautiful article. Well, question you can ask is, what entities, what knowledge graph entities has that competitor got and is talking about that we are not? And help me out here, what can I write about? So we're not actually getting it to write the article for us. Yeah, we could do, but what can we write about? So I looked, Lonely Planet, they're further down on um, page one. And then we've got travelandleisure.com. So here's the prompt. Make a list of knowledge graph entities in this article and do the same for this article and then provide a list of entities in article two that are missing in article one. In other words, what should I talk about? What's a knowledge graph entity? Well, it's a person, place or thing that Google has identified or recognized and stores in a knowledge graph, somewhere we should all aim to be at some stage. So I tell you what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this one again. I'm gonna try this one. Um, so let me, let me defy, defy this. Let me just check the plugins I'm using. Go to model four, into plugins. Okay, and we've got Vox Script, we've got SEO app, and we've got Web Pilot, so we should be good to go. Let's plug that in there. Let's see what ChatGPT says. Please, please be kind to me, ChatGPT. It's Friday, it's 3.28 in the afternoon, it's roasting hot outside, it's about 50 degrees in my shed, and I'm I'm close to... Um, well, I'm probably going to drop a few pounds. That's, a, that's always a good thing. So, so we're using WebPilot. Here's a tip. You can specify to JetGBT which plugin you want to use. And here's another one. If you're not sure what a plugin does, ask ChatGPT, and it will tell you exactly what that plugin does. So here we are using WebPilot. And here's something else that's quite cool while you're waiting. You can actually expand on these. And here you can see exactly what's going on. So WebPilot has gone as we've suggested to LonelyPlanet.com to this article about the best beaches in Italy. There's the information that it's actually crawling through and working on. So what's it working on? Well, it's working out which are the entities that are contained in Google's knowledge graph. Then it's looking at that other website. And it's saying, well, what are their entities that are contained in Google's knowledge graph? Which ones does two have that one hasn't? And here is the list. So this is working beautifully. Take my word for it. But while that works, let's see. Just go back and look at the second part of the question. Oh, here we go. There we go. Look at that. Isn't it nice to see? That's that's when you just sit back and put your feet up and pour yourself, pour yourself a nice cold drink on a hot day like this because how long would that have taken me to do? It would have taken ages. Here's article two. So article one's got 12 entities. Article two, which I think is positioning better in Google. Um, always got more, so we got 14, we got more entities there. Isn't this exciting? Um, okay, entities in article two that are missing in article one. How cool is that? And then, with that information, what, what can we do now? Well, let's ask ChatGP to, to do some more work on this. From the list of entities in Article 2, 
that are missing in Article 1 take the three most popular from a search perspective. So go and search. Put these in a table in column one and create optimized meta titles in column two. And I put peta descriptions. There's no such thing as a peta description. Meta descriptions in three. Yeah, you actually should watch your spelling when you use ChatGPT because it can be a little fussy and it takes things literally. Anyway, we're using VoxScript now. I love VoxScript. It's such a great plugin, especially when you apply it to analyzing, digesting, and spitting out the essence of a YouTube video. It does that brilliantly. Whoa, just lost my screen for a second there. So while that does its thing, um, let's just jump in and see what the finished results look like. It's just like being on um, watching cookery TV. So, and this morning, look at that. This morning, yeah, it used VoxScript as well. It ran VoxScript six times, and there we have it. It's done exactly what we wanted. You could have asked for 40, but I just asked for the top three entities. So we've got the top three entities there, optimized meta title, optimized meta descriptions, and it's done it perfectly. And it's even got a link to the uh, plugin that we use there. How's this one coming on? Okay, that one's still running. It's probably gonna take about another 30 seconds, but there we go. I think that is great. At this point, any questions? Okay. Oh, 2,776,776 2, Kenyan shillings, says Isaac. There we go. There, that sounds like a lot of money. Uh, yes, Isaac, we will be sharing these afterwards as well. So any other questions, guys, just drop them in. Or any prompts that you want me to try or questions that you want me to ask of ChatGPT, just put that in there. Right, let's get on. There we go, that one's still running. Let's get back to our prompt. So that was number five. Number six, love this one. Building topical maps. Okay, now look, act as an SEO expert who is also a fitness fanatic. Where can we find one of them, I wonder? Where can we find one of them? Yeah, I wonder. Okay, give me 30 semantically relevant but unique topics under the main category of gym exercises. I have lost count of the number of times I've been in meetings with clients, and they said, well, this summer, we're gonna write about X, Y, and Z. Can you go away and do some keyword research and come up with some ideas for topics? Oh my word, oh my word, ChatGPT. Dear ChatGPT, can you help me out? For each of these 30 items, give me five keyword variations that include different search intent. Wow, and then we take group one, and then we build out on that. Let's try that. There we go, that one's done. There we go, wonderful. Okay, it does work. Okay, let's build this out. Let's go to ChatGPT. And again, it's nice to see how this works. You pick the model and we're gonna go for the plugins version. And then I'm gonna paste that in. So do I want the whole thing? Um, nope, I'm just gonna break it down. Sometimes it's good. It's good to break things down. So, I've taken the last part out. So hopefully in the next few seconds, this is gonna start spitting out those 30 semantically relevant but unique topics. And then under each topic, five keyword variations. So you see how this is starting to work. It's doing an amazing job for us. So that's number six. Let's open up the one I did earlier. There we have it, exploring the top 10 muscle building exercises in the gym. And we all want to explore those, don't we? How to perform full body workouts in the gym efficiently. Okay, cardio in the gym, best machines and exercises to maximize fat burn. Yeah, we all want some of that. So it did it beautifully. And then I broke out the question, continuing. ChatGPT has got what Google's had for years, but hasn't done so much with. What's that? It's long short term memory. All the while we're in this session, it's remembering what we said previously. So you can refer to stuff back up there. Here are the five. So for the top 10 muscle building exercises in the gym, there we've got those five different headers. And then it went on, starting with group one. Okay, for each of the five variations, provide an optimized. HTML title and meta description. 
voila look at that and i tell you what i have looked at these and tried these and these are super impressive i'd be hard pushed to write better titles and meta descriptions and there's nothing causes an seo's eyeballs to roll more when given 50 pages and asked to write the meta description and improve on the title there's nothing more eyeball rolling than that but now it's a joyous question because just pour yourself a cold drink and get ChatGPT to do it all for you okay by the way of course what you can also do with all this um, there is a plugin that will plug directly into Google Sheets. So I can be sending all of this information directly into Google Sheets. And that plugin is called Zapier. And that's wonderful. And you can do so much. You can pull content, say, digest this YouTube video and build me 10 clickbaity, exciting tweets and push out one an hour. And it'll do that automatically. Again pour yourself a cold drink and get the robot to do the work for you. Okay, right, that's topical maps. Okay, um, next one, intent classification. Right, intent classification. What are we gonna do here? Classify the search intent of these terms. So let me open up a new, chat GPT window and I don't think that I need to do any plugins for this so let's open up chat GPT and go into four don't need plugins so I'm just going to stick with the default method okay classify search intent let me get some search terms um, and what do we got here so I just happen to have some search terms up my sleeve I'm going to put a colon here new line there we go. What do we got? We got stuff about eyeliner. We've got lilac nail polish. We got smoky eyes. We've got it all. But nobody wants to be faffing around generating or separating keywords into intent when the robot, the AI, can do it all for you. And trust me, it'll do it for a thousand keywords just like that. And you can see here that when we don't employ the plugins the engine works so much more quickly there we go that's it done and if you wanted to have a paragraph of content for each one of those based on sites that perform really well now just ask ChatGPT, and it'll do it for you immediately okay so i'm just going to close some of these windows i've you know what i've done there I've actually just closed my presentation. Wow, okay, history. Let's get that back. Let's get that back. Let's get back to where we were. And I think we were just done intent. Okay, there we go. That, that's, that's live, that's live TV for you. Intent classification. Next one, page titles and meta descriptions. So, Above, you previously created a markdown table with two columns, keyword and search intent. Add a third column to this table with a heading title and meta description. So as you go through that thought process and your workflow, look at what you've got, look at what ChatGPT has generated for you and get it to refine it. If it didn't do a good job, get it to change it. Okay, in the third column, acting, as an SEO expert, use the SEO.app and include a perfectly optimized title. Because sometimes it's nice to try some of these different plugins. So SEO.app is a plugin just to see which ones that you prefer. OK, only do this for the top three keywords. OK, so that I did. Um, oh, that I did here. There you go. Above, you previously created a markdown table, and there it is. So for the top three keywords, it's added that third column, the title, and the meta description. Actually, it hasn't put the meta description in, so I'd have to chase it up on that. So let's move on. Let's move on to the next one. So we've got about six or seven minutes left, I think. Clustering keywords. A task that is enough to make 
the most hardy SEO weep, not with joy, weep with, oh my goodness, you know, I don't really want to be doing that. So why should you be doing that when you can get ChatGPT to do it for you? So what do we do? Clustering keywords, let's ask ChatGPT to do this for us. So, and again, I don't think we need a plugin for keyword clustering. There's no hardcore SEO going on in here. So we'll go straight to model four, use default. I will paste that in there, cluster the keywords into semantically relevant groups. And I am gonna choose, oh, I've got some more from the, the world of beauty. This should be, this is like a 30 second job. But again, you can have a thousand keywords in here. I'm just being kind, just being kind um, to myself, to the AI and to you guys. And there we have it. So. Pro so best makeup products, column, cheap makeup products, foundation application, and makeup types. So those are our keyword groupings. Now, if you've got a particular way of grouping keywords, then you can feed that information into ChatGPT and say, this is the approach I would like you to take. So if you have an established set of rules, then by all means, go ahead with that. Okay. So that'll do for that one. Let's get back here. Next, analyze a page. Analyze a page. As a acting as a senior SEO strategist and expert. And here's the page, mankind.co.uk. Okay, analyze it. And I'm being quite specific here. Okay. So the keyword is best men's moisturizer with SPF. Include recommendations on content, code, schema, linking, double eat, core web vitals, meta title, meta description. I've actually said in brackets, write it out. Because in saving on those valuable tokens, sometimes ChatGPT takes its foot off the gas a little. So you've got to keep on it, just like a junior SEO. You've got to, you've got to keep on them sometimes, mind you keep it on as well okay present your answer in two forms an seo recommendations document and a slideshow format you won't build out the slideshow but there are plenty of ways of taking that slideshow format and automating the build of a slideshow so let's get chat gpt we are going to need plugins for this so i'm just going to drop it in um we're going to have the plugins so we're going to have those three again. How do you choose them? Um, you click on a little down arrow. We've got VoxScript, SEO app, and WebPilot. WebPilot is the one that will go out to the web for you. You don't need a plugin to do that. You can just go in web mode, but it depends what you want to do. But for this purpose, we are going to deploy WebPilot, drop in the prompt, hit the button, and off you go. That, of course, was number 10. Here's what it came up with this morning. So, SEO recommendations document. Now, this is a joy. Increase the word count to around 1,500 words because it's actually gone off and looked at the competitors. And we know Google doesn't have rules about word count, but it's, it's nice to have a comparable number. Keyword, ensure the keyword best men's moisturizer with SPF is used naturally throughout the content. Personally, I disagree with that. I have every right to disagree with that. Um, and I'm sure most of you will disagree with that. You don't need it in there. Should, certainly should be in the title. Um, code, HTML tags, image optimization, alt tags, schema, linking, eat. Okay, author bio. Oh, naughty, naughty. Include an author bio for the writer with their credentials to improve expertise and trustworthiness. Wow, references, site, authoritative sources absolutely core web vital so we've got some information there here's our optimized meta title the meta description and the bullet points for our slideshow i think that would save you an awful lot of time here we go so in real time even with the plugins there we go add a section on why spf is important in men's skincare incorporate user testimonials if available amazing right let's get through the rest of these so that's 10 we've got seven to go we've actually got six to go i love this one i love this one seo specific analysis 
double eat. Acting as the expert for this URL, this is a page from the independent. Okay, it's about beard trimmers. Can you tell me how I can improve it so it ranks better for Google's review update and it sends stronger signals? Okay, keyword needs to rank for is this present your answer in an ex SEO recommendations document suitable for an editor who might be skeptical about SEO. Some of them are, not you out there, not any editors I know, never skeptical because they know SEO works. And that's number 11. I'm not going to throw it a prompt in, I'm just going to show this one to you. Here we go. So it's the same prompt. Okay. And here's the document. Dear editor, I understand that SEO might seem like a complex technical field. How to really pee an editor off, start, start like that. However, it's a crucial aspect of digital content, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Google review update. So it's got some information here. Google ChatGPT loves to tell you what it's doing and what it's thinking. Um, probably what I'm doing right now as well. But uh, here we go. So we got some really good information about the UR, the, the review update relevant to this page and eat as well. And it's actually cited the sources because I asked it to for the editor. So that information comes from Search Engine Journal. This information comes from Yoast. Isn't that nice? For more insights on eat, you can refer to this guide. And then we've got SEO recommendations. I think this is the gold here. Emotional appeal, incorporate words that evoke emotions. So I don't know about greed, sloth, and trust. LSI entities, LSI, LSI, latent semantic indexing. I remember when this was the biggest buzzword in SEO about 20 years ago. And then it went quiet. Nobody mentioned it until ChatGPT came out and it's a large language model. So it loves things like LSI. So you're going to get loads and loads of related keywords supposed to help you improve your visibility. You want LSI? Plenty of it in here. FAQs, meta keywords, description, readability as well. I wonder if they're using the Fleisch reading scale for that. Probably they are. If not, tell it to. Get ChatGPT. So this is the reading scale I want you to adhere to. There we go. And it's finished off with a nice salutation. Now, um, moving on, just a few more minutes. How about this? This is what we came for, devising a double each scoring system. Okay, you're an expert. I want you to analyze these three URLs. The one from Vogue, the one from Esquire, the one from Independent. Analyze and compare the each scores. You assign a score that you as an expert are confident to do so from zero to 10. Output it in a table and then, then use Wolfram. Good old Wolfram Alpha. Gosh, that's been around forever. Because you can't build charts in ChatGPT, but you can with Wolfram. I tell it to put the domains on the x-axis and compare scores and then provide the top three recommendations. Okay, the top three, let's see what it came up with. Wow, so here we go. It used WebPilot, then came up with a table. And there's Vogue, good old Vogue in position one with an overall score of 8.348. Eight. Now, if you wanna find out how it built that scoring system, then just ask ChatGPT and it'll tell you the construct behind that. And there's, and there's Wolfram, okay? And that's wonderful. So we got a nice chart there, you know, put that in your presentation. I'm sure it'll wow the audience. And then move on to the recommendations. And I said, here's my site, Fashion Beans. That's a good site. They do some good stuff. And it says, okay, three top recommendations, improve expertise. And that's how you do it. Should be written by a person with a known and reputable authority in the fragrance industry. Enhance authority, build trust. Three great recommendations. Gosh, apologies, my dog is snoring under the table. I hope nobody can hear it. Um, right, okay, there's a couple more to go. Core Web Vitals, the bane of every SEO's life. Nobody wants to be analyzing Core Web Vitals. Um, but with this prompt, analyze the top pages for this SERP. So yes, yeah, you can, you can drop a SERP in there. So just like this, so actually go to Google, um, search for something. I'll show you how 
you can just paste that in there. What does it look like? Go to ChatGPT. And again, I'm opening these in a new window just because. And you'll need the plugins for this one. So you will need that web browser. Don't use the built in web browser because that's going to go to Bing and it's going to drop that into Bing. But as you can see, I have dropped this Google SERP, um, this, this, um, this query in here, which generates a SERP, which I then get ChatGPT to analyze. And I'm asking the question what do I need to do to outperform the top three pages? Well, let's see while this works its magic in real time. Here we have it Esquire, Men's Journal, Ape to Gentleman, links there, the page titles, takes you to the page. Then it pulls in the website performance plugin and then it gives us the answers. It actually breaks it down FCP, LCP, CLS, all of those wonderful details. And then to outperform, this is what you need to do because everybody loves actionable recommendations based on data and we all know that core web vitals is a big play above the fold on page one it makes a difference when all other things are being equal google wants to return sites with great user experience okay next one okay 14 i'm going to finish off with a real corker so this is transcribing videos you have got to see this to believe it Nobody wants to watch a 90 minute video just for somebody to tell you that everything you need to know in the last 30 seconds. So the plugin that we need for this will be Vox Script. Um, that's already in here. I'm going to drop it in. You'll be amazed at the speed with which ChatGPT can analyze a 90 minute video promising to give you all the information you need about the best plugins for ChatGPT. How do you learn about plugins? You ask ChatGPT and it will tell you. So that's number 14. Here's one I prepared earlier. Pulls in VoxScript four times. What's it looking at there? Okay. Um, there is going to YouTube and it's watching. How does it watch that video in 90 seconds? Look, it's almost finished. It's almost finished. Back to 14 here. Okay. There it is. Those are the plugins. This could be a question about anything. So you could even say, go to YouTube and find the three most watched videos on subject X, combine that knowledge and give me a list of the top 10 things I need to do to improve X, Y, or Z. And that will work. And that will just take a couple of minutes. And you can distill so much information, so much information in a short space of time in that way. So. Okay, number 15, algorithmic adherence. And I do promise to finish not a second later than on the hour. And I'm glad virtually everybody is still here. It's still here. Um, oh, a couple of questions. Um, you can do some of this stuff in Bard, John, um, but Bard doesn't have the plugins. Um, but so you can still do some of this stuff, uh, but it's not as good as this. Not as good as this. So here, this is super clever, super clever. So I'm pointing ChatGPT to Google's uh, product reviews or reviews page, which has a really long list of the stuff you need to do. Can you take a bullet list and build a two column table with the requirements, practices in column one and a yes or no in column two for this website here? So it's like doing an eat analysis on a piece of content. Okay, so I'm going to show you what it came up with. That's number 15. And it builds this table. Is that easy to see? Maybe not. Maybe I'll make it bigger. There you go. It builds this table here. Evaluate from a user's perspective. It does it. Demonstrate your knowledgeable. Yes. Oh, it doesn't do this one. Share quantitative measurements. No. Naughty, naughty. Okay. Describe how the product has evolved from previous models. And that was a later addition to those guidelines. It doesn't do that. Okay. Describe key choices and how the product's been designed. No, it doesn't do that. Women's Health Mag. Overall score 11 out of 14. Wonderful. And there's no reason why you can't get that to analyze the top 10 pages, compare it with your page, and say which ones you need to improve on to do better than those. 
it'll do that for you. And the next algorithmic adherence one, and this is the penultimate one, of course, this is the helpful content guidelines. I don't even have to give it the URL, but I don't want it going anywhere else. Let's not go anywhere else. Let's go directly to the horse's mouth. Do the same thing. Here's my page. Summarize it with an overall end score. That's number 16. There we go. Number 16. So there's the page. Oh, and here's the two column table. Yeah, it actually does those. Um, I practiced on some sites that were rubbish. Oh, it doesn't display credentials, certifications, or awards where applicable. No, maybe it's not applicable. Overall score, 15 out of 18. It doesn't provide contact information or customer service. And I looked at the page, and indeed it doesn't. So yeah, in a like-for-like -like situation, you're going to want to have as many yeses as possible. Then we've got a nice summary there. So I think that is the final prompt, but how do you keep up to date? Because I swear every day when I wake up, the amount of stuff that I know related to AI, ChatGPT, and generative um, search, etc., the amount I know nothing about increases on a disproportionate basis, and it keeps me awake at night. It keeps me awake at night. So I started to use ChatGPT to do that with this prompt here. As an expert in the field of online research, AI and online marketing, browse the web and YouTube. I can't be bothered. You go and do it for me. Looking at the past seven days. You couldn't do that back in the day, could you? Past seven days. For news about ChatGPT, particularly in relation to SEO, online marketing, provide a summary telling me the top 10 facts I need to know. I need to know. You will find you get different stuff when you do that every day. So that final one. Um, is here. We use VoxScript. It went straight to YouTube because that's where you can get such a wealth of information. And here are those top 10 facts that you need to know as an SEO expert. So I'll let you guys try that for yourself. So, and then as you build out and as you use this, you will get a history of all your chats down the side here. So you can jump back and re-engage in conversations that you had because these are conversations that you had with the AI from yesterday, from last week, or the week before that. But I would say, remember those three Ps, um, prompts, um, plugins, and practice. And after today, if you've got any questions, oh, there's some more questions. There are some questions. Um, where are those questions? Are they in the chat or are they in the questions? um okay hope you'll share all right okay where do i find where do i find the plugins okay plugins once you open up your chat window um this was a question from rebecca hello rebecca you click on chat gbt4 you click on plugins and there's a little down arrow here and then from there you scroll down and you go straight to the plugin store they don't have a search but don't worry I did the searching. There's about 150, and I went through all of them. And everything related to SEO, I downloaded. And then you can literally go to them all, and you can install. So there we are. Okay, Matt, if you are doing the same prompts every week, can you automate it and ask it to send? Yes, absolutely. You can automate these, and you can get it to send it to Google Sheets and generate new rows. You just specify the sheet, and to do that, you use Zapier, which is an amazing plugin, and uh, I think there is a free version that you can use, or I successfully managed to get that up and running. Um, Steve asks, am I able to take three of my web pages and related content and use ChatGPT to combine them into one page to avoid cannibalization? Yeah, I love that question. Absolutely, 100%. 100%. I think that'd be a really nice challenge if we had more time. Or maybe you send those pages to me, Steve, and I'll do that for you. It'd be my pleasure. So I think it's 1559 in the UK. That went really quickly. There's so much more. This is the tip of a very pointy iceberg. There is so much more you can do. There are more plugins coming out every time, but I think we're out of time now. Any questions? 
um, connect up with me, drop me an email, connect up on LinkedIn, and let's just share some ideas. Let's share these plugins and let's share these prompts. So thank you so much for tuning in, guys, and I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Enjoy the sunny weekend. Thank <laughs> you.